Hello, and welcome back. Um, this is our second video in a series looking at uh, my tier list. I am Shimmerback. Welcome back to the channel, um, or welcome to the channel if, you're, if this is your first time here. Um, just to kind of introduce myself, I am a YouTube critic slash reviewer of sorts. Uh, right now, I basically just do video games, and... Um, Review, reviewed rather a few games such as Doom, Doom Eternal. Um, I can't remember any other games I've reviewed right now. <laughs> Mafia, Mafia 2, uh, some other games. Uh, currently working through the Mafia series. We're on Mafia 3 right now, but for the, for the moment, I figured we'd do a little break and I would introduce myself and let you all know kind of what my tastes are as a reviewer, as a player, as a gamer, stuff like that. So, uh, our last video we looked at C tier. Uh, games that I've classified as, um, you know, maybe being good or, or whatever, but like not engaging me personally or not holding me, um, you know, uh, to to be engaged in the world or whatever. Um, you can go watch that video; it's already up. Uh, but today we are going to talk about B tier. Um, I have five total tiers: S, A, B, C, and D. D are D tier games, don't play these, don't buy these, don't spend your time. C are games that are games I didn't personally love, but you might. Um, they're just games that, for whatever reason, didn't click for me or stopped clicking over time. B tier are games that are going to be kind of the comfort food, kind of the really solid games. You know, they're not the best games ever, uh, but they're also not a bad time. They're just kind of your comfort games. They're, they're reliable. They're games that you're going to spend a lot of time in and, and possibly love. Um, or at least I did. So yeah, A tier are going to be some of the better, some of the best experiences you're going to get. Um, some of the best communities or gameplay systems or, or stories or whatever. Um, things that you're going to want to come back to, things that you really are going to cherish in the future, uh, or think about fairly often or want to revisit. Okay, and then S tier are games that, for me, are the games that represent video gaming the best and the most. Uh, these are the best experiences that the medium has to offer. They're masterpieces. They're unmissable. They're, you know, whatever. Um, when you talk or think about video games, these are always going to be at the top of that that kind of uh, that mountain. Okay. So also important, uh, I have over a thousand games in this library total. Uh, these are just some of how I categorize them. Um, I talked about in my last video how Game Pass Legacy are the games I've actually personally owned and or beaten on various consoles that I just rebought to have for nostalgia and replay sake. Um, so I have over a thousand uh, games in this library. This is only like, I don't know, 50 or so that I've actually categorized. So um, yeah, we, uh, we're we gonna, it's gonna take us some time to work through these, but we'll get there eventually, okay? So let's start with today's video, which is B tier. All right. <clears throat> So B tier games, again, are kind of sort of comfort games that are good. Uh, they're fun, they're fine, they're not the best of their respective genres, okay? Um, last time we start at the beginning alphabetically, so yeah, let's do that again for this one. All right, Blood Rain, Terminal Cut. So, Blood Rain is a very old game at this point. I believe it originally came out on the Xbox. Um, it is a game that I instantly fell in love with. Uh, it's a very ugly game by modern standards. Um, it does not have the most advanced combat system or the craziest things going on, but it is just a solid, fun game. I remember seeing this game in magazines back when that was a thing. <laughs> Um, back when print media was still dominant, like Electronic Gaming Monthly and, and stuff like that. Um, really love the advertisements, which actually one of them used basically a full page version of this cut. Um, no, no pun intended. The terminal cuts are basically re remakes, sort of. They're just kind of, they're not remakes, they're remasters. They're update basically the controls in the game so they run on modern hardware. 
Um, really great world building. I love I love this game. Uh, apparently, I spent 15 hours in this. Really love Blood Rain. Really love the combat. Really love the idea of a, a, a bloodlusty vampiresque killing Nazis uh, and later on killing more fantastical things. Really interesting things with Nazi occult stuff. Just just such a fun game. Um, honestly, this is probably going to go into A tier soon because I, I just love it. I think the reason it's in B tier is because there are some really frustrating things about the gameplay and the design that have not aged well. Um, and also, again, like I said, it's a very ugly game. So I think that's why it's in B tier. Um, the, the movies that the Blood Rain movies are absolutely god awful. I recommend no one ever watch them because it will taint the brand as it already has. Um, but I do recommend the game. The game is just fantastic. I love it. I love Blood Rain so much. As a character, I wish Rain had gotten like her just like rain should be what she should be goth laura croft like she should be what laura croft is today that's what rain should be but instead they turned her into this you know airheaded bimboy blonde dumbass not blonde but whatever um i'm thinking of christana loken in t t2 or whatever it was um and Christina Logan played Blood Rain in the film, so like that's what that comes from, at least the first one. I don't know about the others, I didn't watch them. But yeah, Blood Rain, fantastic game. I absolutely recommend this to anyone who likes just casual, beat em up, fun, slasher video games. I did, I did play this in the 15 hours on like two sittings, and it absolutely holds up. It's still fun, there's still some issues, but it's still a really fun game. Um, this animation right here, actually, this picture, you can actually jump onto a Nazi, drink his blood, and shoot people all at the same time. Like, that's fucking amazing. It still features animations and hit detection and other things that, that other games still have not done 20-something years later. So, yeah, obviously this needs to go into A tier because I'm, I'm way too enthusiastic about this. Absolutely love Blood Rain. Fantastic game. Please pick this up. I love it. I'll probably do a review at some point. Okay, <clears throat> Woo, let's get our fanboy down. Uh, <laughs> number two, uh, Chivalry 2. Um, put about 20 hours into this, right at 20 hours it looks like. Um, it's just a fun game. You know, Chivalry 2 is a game basically where you're playing like these medieval knights. There are these two completely made up factions. The good blues and the bad reds. Uh, and then there was a third like Arabic islamic-esque faction that was added later and they're the the invader yellows yeah it's kind of made to mimic the crusades a bit um i guess it would be like the english versus the french versus like the the, the islamic but I, I don't know something um <clears throat> not not a i wouldn't say like long term it's like the best game ever because it's really not there are so many things that uh, glitches and stuff on the back end that are still not really addressed. The weapon balancing is just really, really terrible. They're absolutely as mad as in this. But it's such a fun game. If you were, you and three or four people get together and play this, you're going to have a blast. So, B tier. Games where, you know, the production value might not be there, or, or maybe the gameplay systems aren't going to be there, but, like, they're fucking solid. Like, these are just fun games. Um, you know this is like buttered bread like buttered bread is, it's so simple but it's so elite at the same time you know that's what these games are so do i recommend chivalry 2 absolutely yeah uh, if especially if you have friends you can play this with um you can you can cut off someone's limbs cut off their head pick up their head and then throw it at someone else and kill them with it um you can throw fruits and vegetables you can grab a turkey leg and rah! Uh, you can, um, I'm not exaggerating. These are all actually things you can do in the game. Uh, there are beehives you can pick up and like throw at your opponents and the bees will sting them. Then it'll be like a DOT over time. It's just, it's, it's a great time. Uh, the maps are good. It's just fun. You know, what can I say? It's a fun game. It's not the best ex, uh, expression of a medieval fighter, I don't believe, but it is, it is a very fun game and I really do enjoy it. So absolutely 100 percent recommend this i do believe i bought the collector's edition or whatever the deluxe because i liked it so much i don't want to support the project and the studio um but yeah absolutely love it please please play this if you have any interest in medieval brawlers all right <clears throat> crimson snow 
Uh, so it says I have six hours into this straight up. Uh, I beat this game like five different times because I was trying to 100% get all the achievements. Crimson Snow, I bought. I don't like horror games. Um, you're going to find in my, my list, my reviews, I don't actually like horror games. Uh, I'm, I'm, I get too scared. Um, I'm doing much better in this regard because I, I kind of have some tricks to how to get through these. Without being scared for people who are interested, I'll probably post a video on that at one point, at some point. Um, Crimson Snow is a game that it requires the suspension of disbelief for you to really enjoy it. But I really liked it. I really love this game. Um, I don't love it because it's like the best expression of a horror game or it's the best this or that. I really love it because it's so earnest in what it tries to do. It's not trying to make the most ultimate horror experience like Resident Evil tries to do. It doesn't try to be the most gruesome or disgusting thing you've ever seen like Outlast. It's just a solid horror story, you know. Uh, it takes place, you know, over the course of one evening. It's rather short and condensed. It's not trying to be everything all at once. It's just trying to be... Um, if anyone remembers these, it's trying to be like a, a little Goosebumps book or a Fear Street. Like something small, something digestible, something you can knock out in an evening and be done and move on with your life. And in that regard, I think it's extremely successful. I really enjoyed this. Um, I think there there's like two or three jump scares throughout the entire thing. The entire experience, by the way, if you know how to play it, I beat it like I think I beat it five times, at least four. And the first time it took me a couple hours, I think two and a half. And then every time after that, it took me like less than an hour and a half to beat this. So an incredibly short game. It's comparable to a movie, like a horror movie, but interactive. I really enjoyed it. The story isn't super in-depth or complicated. And I believe this was made by a Russian crew, uh, or studio rather. So the translation's a little bit rough, but it's a fun game. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed streaming it. I enjoyed playing it. I enjoyed playing it over and over and over and really looking at the craft of how a video game is made and I was able to kind of pinpoint like okay these are the moments they scripted this to happen or this is when this effect came into play or whatever else so it is I think it's a really fantastic game if anyone wants to kind of look into a video game and like no face value how it was made and how it works but I don't think it's like the best game if you want the most horrifying thing ever uh that would be other games but a really good, solid, you know, bowl of cornflakes game. Just really solid, really fantastic, really great, really enjoyable experience. Um, I highly recommend. Yes, absolutely. I love that B tier is turning into something that I'm extremely enthusiastic about. I don't know why, but I didn't expect that. The Darkness 2. The Darkness 2 is the sequel to, uh, obviously, The Darkness, which was... They're very different games. They're very different games. I believe The Darkness 2 was made by DE, which is Digital Extremes, which is also elsewhere on this tier list with Warframe. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, I might be wrong, but uh, The Darkness 1, I can't remember the team who made it. I think it was Starbreeze. Uh, the Darkness 1 was a really, really great game. Uh, you had this kind of miniature open world that you walk around in, and it was really kind of this stylized, but gritty art style. Darkness 2 is nothing like those. It's not open world at all. It's just you do the level, you get through it, you're done. The story, the writing is fine. Um, I think Brian Bloom is the actor who, who voices Jackie as Staccato in this version. Um, and Brian is, is... I don't really like him as an actor or performer. I, I, I take it back. I love him as an actor. I don't super like him as a writer. Um, and that's just because I don't super care for modern, uh, excuse me, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, which he also wrote and starred in, co-wrote and starred in, rather. But The Darkness 2, I think he did a really fantastic job in his performance as Jackie. I think the game is really fun. I really enjoyed this. One of my issues with the game is that the story is just extremely predictable the entire time. I was just like, this is dumb. I don't like this. Why am I doing this? But... The moment-to-moment -moment shooting, the killing people, the, you know, being monstrous and becoming the darkness and really embodying that 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 horrifyingness was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, it does kind of have this cinematic-inspired, like, um, 
one flew, I guess, from the cuckoo's nest or whatever. Um, I guess that's that's the correct reference. Okay, I could be wrong. I haven't seen the film. But basically, there's kind of a plot line where you're being trapped in this kind of other world and you're trying to figure out your way out. And I didn't really care for that story. It's fine, but I didn't really care for it. Um, what this game really excels at is just being fun. It's violent. It's gross. It's shoot things and tear people apart with your tentacles and not in the Japanese way. And it's just a great time. It, I, I spent 16 hours into this. I did beat the single player a couple times, and then I played the multiplayer a little bit. Really enjoyed this. Um, one thing that sucks is that as you do your executions and stuff, they get really repetitive because you have to literally just stand there and watch. You can't do other things while you're watching those. So, yeah, that kind of sucked. Other than that, I really like this game. Um, I do recommend it. Yeah, it's a really fun game. If you just want a simple shooter to have a good time with, a couple nights, whatever, absolutely pick this up. Really fun. Really like the lore. Really like the comic series. Um, really solid. And I, I, I really... It sucks that the Darkness 1 isn't on Steam, but at least we have this one. So, yeah. Recommend. Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay. I'm kind of conflicted on this one. I did not start playing Dead by Daylight because of the game. I started playing Dead by Daylight because of the community surrounding the game. Which is the player base. And the player base is one of the healthiest I've ever seen in a in a game of this size and this stature. I know so many people are going to listen to this and be like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> what? But it's not Rust. Uh, it's not Warhammer. It's not, you know... League of Legends, it's not just like pure cancer the entire time. It's solid. Um, Dead by Daylight also has a really, really substantial female community. It has a really substantial LG, uh, LGBT plus, you know, trans community, all these other, other um, aspects of society that really latch onto horror movies and really are instrumental in their success as a, as a genre. Um, a very inviting game. You can find pretty much any kind of combination of player base or, or team that you want to, which I think is really great. Um, I primarily got into this game because of a streamer I found on Twitch uh, during the pandemic. And I met other streamers. I started streaming this myself. I grew very quickly. I really enjoyed the community. I helped uh, form on Twitch and, and Discord, stuff like that at the time. My thing with Dead by Daylight is that it's an incredibly static game. And what I mean by that, it is the same shit every single expansion. It is one monster with some sort of appendage or knife. And you hit one of four survivors for an entire map for, you know, 20 minutes at a time. That's all it is. There are some different perks and there are some different map gimmicks and there are some different things going on. But other than that, like, you're smacking four dudes for a match. Or you're run away from a dude and you may or may not have a competent team. I am a terrible survivor. I will n I'm 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 such a bad survivor. Probably less than 20% of my playtime is survivor because I'm so bad at it. Um if you have a good team or if you have people who want to play this with you, it is a fun time. Um I, do I recommend it? I do. I do recommend it. Yeah, I do recommend it if you want a game to play with friends or if you just want a game to chill out with and kind of simulate your own horror movie. It's quite good in that regard. Um, if you're looking for, like, the scariest game ever, it's not that. It's, it's not even close. Um, it's a good time. It, it, this is like a, a B-movie horror movie simulator. Um, it's fine. It's not bad. Uh, I have gotten kind of disillusioned with it because I think there's so many other things I could do with this idea. So many more maps, so many more game modes, so many more different types and kinds of characters and, and stuff like that, and they just don't do it. So it's kind of like Elite Dangerous to me where I think it's a fantastic idea and it can be used in such interesting directions. And it's just not. It's underdeveloped. You know, the studio really rests on their laurels and does not fulfill the potential of this franchise. So, yeah, I do recommend it, but with plenty of kind of hesitation. Um, but, yeah, good game. Not a great one. The community is great. The game is not. Okay. 
Escape the back rooms. Uh, I'm kind of hesitating to put this even on a tier list because it's not even complete. Uh, it's still on early, early access. The reason it's here is because I beat it. Um, I beat this with a group of friends. It's my real life friend group who we know each other for like 15, 20 years at this point. Um, uh, I don't like this game, um, but I love my friends. So I played it and I enjoyed it spending time with my friends in the game. Um, I don't know anything basically about like Escape the Backrooms or the Backrooms Journal or SCP or any of these other, I, I, I don't even know what to call them, like surreal, high tech horror worlds. I don't know. Um, I don't, liminal horror is something I love, but like I don't, I, I don't know anything about these, so I can't really say anything about them uh, as far as like in depth, whatever. Um, we beat this twice. We beat it once before the most recent update, and again after the recent one. I can't remember what the patch is called, but yeah, we did beat it twice. Um, I didn't get to beat, I think, the very last section, but I played all the rest of the game. It's fun. It's it's good. Um, do I recommend the game? I recommend the game if you have friends, because you get to spend time with people you love. Um, but as a as an as an independent player slash reviewer of this, I can't recommend it because I didn't enjoy it outside of that. Nothing wrong with it. It's not bad. It's very, very fun with a group of people. And that's why it's in B tier because it allows you a time and a place and a space to have fun with people you care about. But yeah, recommend only if you have people you love that you want to spend time with. All right. XO1. XO one is also another weird one on this list because it is very similar to Crimson Snow in that I beat this game so many times. Um, I think it only takes about 90 minutes, maybe a little bit longer to beat. I beat this game, I think, six times. Um, I played it the first time, and I was very conflicted because I'm like, I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I don't. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, having, quote-unquote, played and completed anything I, I think this game is it's not a game it's an experience i wrote a review of this i was very high when i wrote it <laughs> um and maybe i'll i'll publish that video at some point but i really enjoyed this game i beat it so many times um there's a story there's no dialogue there's a little bit of writing it's more about the journey. It's more about the experience and more about the moment. Um, I bought this just because it was, it was cheap and it was very much outside my wheelhouse. It was something I, I wasn't necessarily familiar with. I just wanted to try something new. And I found that I absolutely loved it. I absolutely engaged, riveted. I, I beat this game so many times. And it's the kind of game like when me and my friends would get off of our games, I would just turn this one on, put in my headphones and then just chill for the rest of the night that's the kind of game it is um do i recommend it absolutely it's an indie game it's made by i think only a couple people made this it's it's beautiful it's it's such a beautiful experience it's very similar to something like flower um love the game highly recommend it again very surprised i'm this enthusiastic about b tier at this point <laughs> okay <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get crucified by anyone who loves Valve um, because I have Half-Life 2 in B tier. But Half-Life 2 is in B tier for two reasons. Number one, I never played the original. I never played it when it came out. This is Half-Life 2 update, so it's like a fan-made remaster, basically. Um, came out several years ago. I never played the original. I never played the original Half-Life um, either, so that's crazy. Um, these were games that the the category Game Pass I have on here is made for. It's games that passed me by because I couldn't play it because I didn't have a console or I didn't have the money or whatever. So the Half-Life hype I never really got into. While people were playing Half-Life, I was playing Halo. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I... 
enjoyed this. I enjoyed Half-Life 2 update. I enjoyed Half-Life 2 basically. Um, I just don't understand the hype. I, I don't. I don't get it. Um, I wasn't there. I, I wasn't there for the. You know, you had to be there. I wasn't there. It's good. It's a shooter. You know, it's got some physics-based things that I think are really interesting, and I can see how at the time they were really influential and innovative. But you know, it, it passed me by, and I enjoyed it. But it's not like my favorite thing ever. It's B tier. Yeah. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm going to be, yeah, destroyed. Okay. <clears throat> Mafia Definitive. Let's move on from that controversy. <laughs> Mafia Definitive. I never played the original Mafia. Um, I've done a review of this. There are, I believe, three videos of this review on YouTube that I did. Uh, I like to review things and talk about them in a series rather than all in one video. Um... Definitive is a fantastic, I think, remake. Uh, from what I understand of the original, there were a lot of issues with some of the storytelling, with limitations of technology, limitations to game design and, and world design, stuff like that. And I think Mafia has done a really fantastic job of bringing that up to date. I love this game. That's why I started reviewing these games, because I really enjoyed it that, that much. It's such a fantastic experience. It's a good story. It's a good world. It's just real solid. It's just not much beyond that. Um, it is a fantastic homage to a much simpler time of gaming, where it's just like you make the game and you're done. Um, and it's, it's a very solid cinematic experience but beyond that it's not like the best thing ever so i do recommend it if you get this on a sale you know 10 15 bucks it's really good um i just wouldn't pay like 40 or 60 for it but yeah it's a fun game i really enjoyed it yeah mafia 2 mafia 2 is a game i did not super enjoy uh i really wanted to because it seems like of the three games this one is the most loved has the most kind of nostalgia and importance attached to it. Unfortunately, I just don't think it's that good of a game. Um, it's a, it's a it's a great movie. It's not a good game, in my opinion. It's not very good. It's fine. It's serviceable. It's it's B tier. It's that's what these are for. It's fine. Um, I don't really care for Vito. I um, a, a lot of people love Vito Scaletta, the protagonist of this one. Um, Tommy up here, Tommy Angelo is the protagonist of Mafia 1. I like him much more than Vito Scaletta. Uh, Vito has a friend, Joe Barbaro, who's a really cool, one of the best companions in gaming, honestly. But other than that, I don't really care for Mafia 2. It was really hard for me to actually get these videos out because I, I didn't want to go against, you know, a player base who's loved this game so much. But at the same time, I can't, I can't recommend this super highly. Do I recommend it? Yeah, actually. 10, 15 bucks, it's a really solid two or three nights, you know, I got 24 hours into it, I beat it a couple times, um, for the purposes of review, but, um, it, I think it's a really good game at showing, again, what a just, a basic game is supposed to be, it's not supposed to be this crazy microtransaction laden thing, it's supposed to be a game, just give us a story, give us a world, give us an experience that we can't get anywhere else, and, you know, let us go, right? So yeah, recommend, just not super highly. Medieval Dynasty. <clears throat> okay. Alright, this one's hard. Medieval Dynasty is one of these games that is made with essentially what looks like asset flip materials. Like, it is so basic and ugly. It's such an ugly game. Um... But it's so addictive. Like, I don't know how the hell they did this. I put 32 hours into this game, according to this counter right here. And I was in two sittings. The first sitting, I was I played this, I swear to God, like 20 hours. Like 21 hours. The second time, I played it for like 12. And then I was like, okay, I'm uninstalling because this is ruining my life. That's all I did for an entire weekend. Um, you're, you're, you come to this like little valley after, I guess, your parents die. And you're building out your little village. It's just very addictive. Um, but also, I have really big issues. The story is just so goddamn simple and basic, and you can go through it not very long. Um, 
you know, there are four different seasons, so four different biomes and all this other stuff. But the game is so rigid in certain ways. The reason I stopped playing it is because I was trying to build up my village with, like, I wanted two males to live in the hunting cabin. And I wanted, like, two females to live in the, you know, the field area. And I wanted whatever. But it was, like, you have to have a male and a female. And then there's a chance for them to make a baby. But I'm, like, I don't want babies in my village. I don't want, I don't want P and V. I want... I want, you know, the workers to live in houses together and work. And that, that wasn't allowed at the time. I haven't come back to this in a long time, though, so they may have updated it more. Um, extremely addictive. It's well made. I think it's a solid game. But it's 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 like it's like brand flakes, right? It's not corn flakes. It's brand flakes. It's very good for you, I guess. But also, like, pretty, pretty flavorless. Pretty, pretty bland. Um, liked it. Don't love it. All right, Shadow of Mordor is in B tier because uh, Shadow of War is in A tier or even S tier. I can't remember, but we'll come at it. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is a very, very basic first. It feels like a first draft, which is great because this first draft allowed a much better game to be made after that. Um, huge fan of Lord of the Rings, huge fan of Middle Earth. Huge fan of the orcs and the dwarves and the elves and all the other stuff. Um, the way they integrated wraiths into the story, you know, Gollum shows up, some other things. It's just a really fun game. I really enjoyed this. I, it's B tier because it's basic. It doesn't have the depth. It doesn't have the expansive systems that the second one does. It, it's very kind of a basic story, like a like a you know get back at your tormentor story, revenge type thing. It's not a bad game. Um, I, I loved this game when it first came out. I actually bought this for my friend who it didn't click for, uh, for I believe $40. And I love this game. Absolutely adore it. I do love this game. It's just this, the next game in the series is so superior that it knocked this down to B tier for me. So do I recommend it? If you've never played it, absolutely, absolutely hundred percent play this before war because this will ruin war or war will ruin this for you. But Fantastic game. Absolutely loved it. Can't say enough good things about it. It's just not as developed as what I would like to have seen. Um, Panzer Dragoon Remake. So, I've played Panzer Dragoon Orda. I never played Panzer Dragoon or Panzer Dragoon Orda when they first came out um, on the Dreamcast. But I played Orta when that came out on Xbox. And I really found it fun. Um, and I came back and I just wanted to play this. It's a very simple game. It's on rails. Um, and basically the idea is that as the, your drag's transporting you throughout the world, you have to shoot everything. Really fun game. Really beautiful. Um, I think I got every achievement except for one, which is like play it for 100 hours. I'm not leaving the game on for that long just for an achievement. Um, it's a really solid game. Uh, it's very simplistic by modern gaming standards. But a very fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I do really recommend this, but just on a, the deepest cell you can find it because it is pretty basic. Um, I beat it in five hours. After well, I beat it like three or four times. Um, but yeah, I, I I was done with it at like five hours. Again, really great for a night and evening. You know, get, grab some pizza, grab a beer, whatever. Play it. Super fun. Good night. Right. But yeah, that's about it. <clears throat> Predator Hunting Grounds. I don't have many hours in this game. I have less than seven, but I, I should have more. Um, I was really impressed with this. I thought it was just going to be really crappy and kind of a cash. It kind of is. It's just a low. It's just a low budget kind of interpretation of a Predator game. Um, it has nowhere like the the production value or system or design of like Alien Isolation, but it's a fun game. It's solid. Um, I thought it was kind of hokey. It was kind of basic. You know, just just a bunch of meatheads, you know, versus the predators. But they did a really good job, I think, of balancing out the the two factions and how your predator is going to hunt your people and stuff like that. I I found it really fun for the hours I played. Um, I just think there are better experiences out there. That's a um, not a bad game. Quite good. If you know, it's the only predator quote unquote sim out there. So if you want that, go for it. But um, I really enjoyed it. I paid like, I think four or five bucks for this. So it was super cheap. Um, really enjoyed it. I do recommend it. 
It's just not a game that held my attention very long. Prototype. Uh, the second one doesn't work on Steam right now. Um, don't know why. That sucked because it was really. I, I immediately fired up Prototype 2 after beating Prototype. Uh, prototype I put about 16 hours into, it looks like. And Alex Mercer is one of the most god awful, most boring protagonists I've ever seen in a video game. But considering he's meant to be a stand in for you. Uh, the player, and also he absorbs, you know, whatever the hell he wants to. Um, yeah, that's okay, I guess. Story is very basic. It's pretty bad. Uh, it's basically like, hey, there's an infection that's that's wiping out New York, and we have to somehow, you know, um, survive, live, whatever, like figure out what happened. Um, Alex is part of this conspiracy, whatever. Um, I... <sighs> I'm kind of conflicted. I have never seen such a fantastic example of simulating the changes in a world over time. Uh, the game starts out where you're basically in New York. There's not a lot going on. There's not, you know, craziness, whatever. But as the progression um, of the infection spreads, as the infection spreads, the progression of the city, you can actually see it happen in real time. And what will change is you have individuals who are like hunched over and they're holding their stomach because they need to vomit or they feel sick or whatever. And eventually that'll give way to military checkpoints where, you know, they'll, the soldiers will like check for people or see that they're bleeding from the mouth or whatever and then instantly shoot them. And then that'll progress to like all these zombie type creatures running around and the military's just shooting them on site to, you know, you have entire regions that are taking over with this biomass, this infection and, you know, people are dying and being, you know, eaten and, and consumed and, you know fantastic progression of a disease in a world that uh, we usually don't see you know we don't really see that in video games very often just absolutely fantastic the entire time i was riveted by just walking around the world and seeing how the progression was being shown um it's never been replicated in a game since this to this extent and such a good uh level such a high level of quality i've never seen it which sucks because this is one of the best games, one of the best worlds, or, or excuse me, one of the best depictions of New York ever in a video game. Just absolutely phenomenal. Um, abilities are good. Uh, Traversal is good. Combat's good. It's all good. Um, it's all very serviceable. Uh, I remember the final boss. It took me a couple hours of banging my head against that particular wall. And also I had to look up how to beat him because I just didn't understand. I was like, this is stupid. And you have to do it in a very specific way. But once you do it, like, it's very easy. They just they just want you to do it in one very specific way or you're doing it wrong. Um, do I recommend Prototype? I got this for very cheap. I think I got it for like five bucks or less. Absolutely, I recommend it for that. I even recommend it for 20 bucks because you're still getting 15 hours. It looks like what I got out of it. Um, fun game. Uh, it's just very outdated. It's pretty ugly at this point. The cutscenes are bad. The writing is bad. The performances are meh. Um, it, it's this game is for the open world. That's what this game is for. So yeah, if you're interested in an open world action game, this is your shit. I hope you. I hope you get it. It's really enjoyable. I really love it. And it also shows us aspects of games that have like. They really, really shine in ways that have not been replicated. So, yeah, absolutely recommend. Rainbow Six Siege says I have a hundred hour, or excuse me, hundred minutes, so about less than two hours uh, of gameplay on Steam. I play this quite a lot on console. Um, I rebought it so I can play it here, and it turns out I just didn't care um, because by this point they had added, you know, season passes and added even more to the cash shop. I and they also made it where you have to buy each individual operator and buy this and that and I, I understand how you can like nickel and dime your community to such an extent that you know to this extent I don't even like playing it anymore because of that um, Rainbow Six Siege is not in D tier for one reason uh, it's not in D tier because it is the only it is the only tactical and I can't even say that anymore. I was about to say it's the only tactical shooter of its kind on Steam now. Um, or, you know, anywhere, really. Uh, like, multiplayer. But it's not even that tactical. Cause it's so ridiculous at this point. Um, I kind of want to put this in D tier now that I'm looking at it. 
uh, for like don't play. Uh, but it's a fun game. So if you know if you can stomach the microtransactions and you can get into the game, it's a very fun game. It's the only experience like it on you know the internet, except for maybe Counter Strike. But even that's goofy in its own ways. Um, it's fun. You know, it has a pretty cool community. The overall narrative that's going on, I don't care for. They shit the bed when they hit Night Haven. They shit the bed when they hit the, you know, the ice capades or whatever. I, I don't, I don't, I don't super care for this universe. I don't care for these characters. Um, but again, it's fun. Just don't think about it too hard. You know, it's B tier. Yeah. Warframe. Warframe. I have just under six hours here on Steam. I have. I checked very, very recently, like this week. Uh, I have over 500 hours in the console version and PlayStation 4 version. Um, the only reason I have this in my library right now, like downloaded, is because they recently had the um, account migration combination, whatever update. So now all my stuff on PlayStation is here on PC, and my PlayStation stuff has been wiped out, which is great. Like, that's fine. I, I wanted all my stuff here on this account. Um, Warframe is a game that I also think is just misprioritized. Uh, I played Warframe because I was frustrated with the fact I couldn't walk around as a character in Lee Dangerous. Um, Warframe is Diablo, but like better. Um, it's it's basically it is it's a mobile game it really is at this point it's such a shit show monetization wise i can't recommend it um i want to try to get my friends and stuff into this but like it's such a hostile game to get into it's 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 extremely old at this point so it's about a decade or, or so old and all of these systems have been added with every single update you know a phenomenal community that supports this really you know not the best but not like the worst either um i'd say they're probably like under they're, they're probably less than dead by daylight but they're definitely better than like the league community or whatever um <sighs> fantastic world fantastic world building fantastic you know design interesting stuff going on um it's just extremely grindy and i don't understand why someone would want to grind this game for as long as it requires um you know if you want to get anywhere you have to grind for hours and hours and hours if you don't want to do those things you can pay for every you know of course you can pay for everything but everything at least on the the pc side is so overpriced i would never recommend it like you don't get any story content you don't get anything new or anything but you can pay for like the latest pack or whatever and it's it's the most recent character warframe that has been announced i can't remember what it's called but you'll get the warframe and you'll get some cosmetics and you'll get you know a couple other things and like it's like 60 or 80 bucks for just that for a fucking character on a yeah it's free to play but like it's basically a mobile at this point like um there are timers on so many things inside that you can speed up the timers and make them go away if you you know just outright purchase the item um you can put together these warframes and slots for them and stuff like that in the game if you want but you have to grind so much that's not worth it so i don't recommend warframe um i love warframe i do love it i love playing it it's very addictive i enjoy the world i enjoy the world building i enjoy you know i, I enjoy it um i don't recommend it there are other better games to play um with better experiences um that are not going to try to prey on you in the ways that warframe does because absolutely everything is up for sale in warframe and it's so expensive i just don't want to do it i don't want to support this studio i don't want to support this project right I mean, I mean, if they if they said, okay, here's you know, here's forty bucks for this expansion or fifty bucks, or I'd be a hundred percent on board with that, because um, the expansions are quality, they're really fun, they have a lot of systems and stuff going on. They're they they do a really great job at expanding the universe, but they want to use this like gotcha business model or overpriced business model. I just can't stand and I, I hate. 
the only reason this is not in D tier is because I enjoy it. <laughs> and I have so much time and money. I've already put, you know, $1,000 in this thing. Um, that I, I, you know, I have it. I'll play it every once in a while. But it's so hostile to new players. I do not recommend anyone get into it, if you're, especially if you're new. Um, it's just such a hard game to, to get into and continue. And, and again, there are other games that are better. So, yeah. Um, this is it, it looks like, for our B tier. Um, I, I'm really surprised, actually, at how enthusiastic I was about a lot of these. Blood Rain, Chivalry 2, Crimson Snow. Really, really great games. Really, really fun games. Mafia series games are really good. Um, Panzer Dragoon and Shadow of Mordor are kind of eh, Predator are kind of eh, Prototype, I personally find them fun. And they're, you know, very unlike anything else you can find out there. Um, but yeah, I guess this is it for the B tier. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, again, these are games that I played, I liked, I didn't love, I got through them, and then I, I moved on. Um, so yeah, I recommend, I do actually, yeah, I, I recommend all of these. Uh, with some some reservations, but yeah, I hope that's uh, I hope that's explained where I am on these. Um, thanks for spending time with me tonight, and um, I'll have the A tier out fairly soon. Let's hope. So yeah, thanks for thanks for visiting me. I hope you guys have a great evening, day, night, um, and I will be back with another video hopefully soon. But yeah, thank you. Bye.